Now when we present statistics, we frequently use graphs to help us make sense of things. One of those graphs is called a histogram. Today we're going to have a look at how we create a histogram. So let's begin. Now histograms and column graphs are very similar things. So it's very important that we distinguish the difference between them. A column graph, as we can see here, has little gaps in between each of the bars. Whereas a histogram that we can see here doesn't have any of those gaps. Now you might be wondering at this point, why do we have gaps in one and not the other? Well, if we look at the column graph, you'll notice that we're representing discrete data. However, the histogram we're representing continuous data. Data that has everything in between. Now if you want to review what the difference between discrete and continuous data is, I've left a link below. But for now, let's work out when would we use a histogram and when would we use a column graph. Now like I said before, column graphs are good for discrete data. We also use column graphs to represent categorical data. Whereas on the histogram side of things, we use histograms to represent continuous data, but also to represent grouped discrete data. Now today I'm going to demonstrate how we create a histogram using grouped discrete data. Now in my last video, you might remember that we created some frequency tables for the scoring of Steph Curry and LeBron James. What I'm going to show you today is how we can take that frequency table and present it to you visually as a histogram. Now if you think you might know how to do this, I want you to pause the video now and have a go. That way you can compare with how I do it. Now before we begin creating the histogram, there's a few things about a histogram that we need to ensure that we include with every histogram we create. The very first thing is we need a title for our histogram. So in this case, I'm using LeBron James's scoring between March and April 2016. So I'm going to let that be my title. The next thing I must ensure that every histogram has is labels for both the x-axis and the y-axis. Now along the x-axis you can see that I've represented the intervals of scoring that I have in my frequency table. So I'm going to call this one scoring. Along the y-axis you can see that I've got the frequency or how often he scored between those intervals. So I'm going to call that one frequency. Now when I'm creating a histogram I need to refer to my frequency table. Now between 0 and 4 you can see that the frequency was 0. So I've got to leave that frequency or the bar there at 0. Between 5 and 9 was also 0. So I leave the bar at 0. So the first part of the histogram that I'm going to fill out is between the intervals of 10 to 14, which I find along my x-axis, which is just here, and I go up to the frequency of 2. And I create a little bar like shown. And I continue working through the frequency table until I've completed the whole table. But I'm going to fast forward so you can see it happen. Now it's really important when you're doing these by hand that you use a ruler. So that way it's nice, neat and tidy. But now I've got a really nice visual representation of LeBron James' scoring between March and April of 2016. And what I can instantly see is, in most games he actually scores between 25 and 29 points. I can also see the range of his scoring is pretty consistent with the vast majority of his scores between 20 and 34 points. So let's quickly highlight the important things with a histogram. A histogram is where all the bars are touching. It's to represent either continuous data or grouped discrete data. In this example here, we use grouped discrete data. It provides a nice visual presentation of 
our data for us. Things we must include are a title, it must include labels on the axes, those axes must go up in consistent intervals, and we must use a ruler when we're completing these by hand. So now, I want you to have a go with one yourself. But before you do, I want you to list off for me, what is the difference between a histogram and a column graph? When should you use a histogram, and when should you use a column graph? Then it's time to create your own histogram. So, below is a frequency table to show Stephen Curry's scoring between the same months. I want you to use a histogram to represent his scoring. Once you've done that, in question four, you're going to compare your histogram with LeBron James's histogram. And to challenge you, I want you to list three statements that you could make about each player's scoring for those months.